Well, what Australia is once again uh, obsessed with sending in the military to annihilate Indigenous people, this latest round appeared to kick off when Peter Dutton went to the media to play politics with the livelihoods of Indigenous people. He did that by inviting Prime Minister Anthony Albanese out to Alice Springs to see what it's really like out there because Indigenous kids are apparently running rampant in town. The Prime Minister should visit Alice Springs. Uh, I would go with the Prime Minister tomorrow to visit Alice Springs because this is an issue that is beyond politics. It is about a bipartisan position. This is a racist white obsession with youth crime that is perennially useful to Conservatives. There are entire Conservative careers that can be made just out of arguing that every progressive measure is bad because they all ignore the question of how bad rural Aboriginal people have it. If you actually speak facts and truth, you are called a racist. The efficacy of this approach in 2023, hey, it's the same as it was in 2007-2008 when the NT intervention kicked off. It helps racists come off like saviours. And it helps reinforce the notion that the only real blacks are the country blacks, which is useful politically for deriding the city blacks, which is invariably just code for any indigenous person who's actually involved in politics. So it basically means you get to ignore all active Aboriginal sovereignty politics at hand. Too many of those people who realize that they want to do something for, to assist the Aborigines. The first thing they do is they go running off to the Northern Territory looking for some real yes. Aboriginal yes. What? Are there no Aboriginal people in Victoria? You know? Are there no communities in this part of the world where they live in their own backyard that don't have problems that are just the same sort of magnitude as any problems they're going to go and find in the Northern Territory? It's the same paternalism toward Aboriginal people that really began in 1788. It just gets a modern lick of paint with this hand-in-hand -hand relationship between the mainstream media and the government. You see, now what happens is the media tells all you city whites all these horror stories about how all these Aboriginal children are little terrorists and all rural Aboriginal adults are predators. All us whites whip each other up into a bipartisan frenzy with the spooky stories until we and the paternalistic government can genuinely see no other option but to send an entire army in. They sent an army in in 2008, didn't they? And they want to send one in again. So now the media is trying to convince the government to do it. They just have to tell the scariest stories they can think of. And that's where Rachel Hale comes in. They are the chaotic scenes that left nurse Rachel shaken to the core. I have never felt so terrified in my life. I fear for my life that night. The mayhem filmed from her motel room balcony in Alice Springs. A male drinking at the pub walks out, attempting to de-escalate an unruly situation, but ends up in the middle of the fight himself. Three males land a number of punches and even kick the man. Oh, the pub gates closed, much to the disgust of one of the offenders. Rachel was staying in accommodation in Alice Springs and she filmed an hours long fight between some indigenous children and some adult white men drinking in a pub in Alice Springs. It looks like a really rough fight. It went on for ages. Um, fights are bad. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. She uploaded the videos to Facebook. Then the media got a wind of her. The home life of these children is horrific. And these children are being raped. These children are being... The domestic violence is, is so shocking that it's much safer for these children to be on the streets than to be at home. Horrific stories of abuse and neglect. What many frontline staff experience every day. In my career, I've seen a child aged four come in with anal warts. I've seen a girl who was six with vaginal sores. I've heard of a, there was, last year there was a, a two-year-old that was raped. Two. Why are we not talking about this more? Outback nurse, Rachel Hale. When you say outback nurse, you obviously lend the impression that you have direct experience uh, working with indigenous communities in the area, hey? 
that's not an accident. It's obviously also how Rachel's introduced in these conversations and it's how she presents herself in the conversations as well. I feel sick in my stomach. I've been a nurse for 14 years. I've worked in the prison, mandatory alcohol rehab facility, an Indigenous clinic. I've been a hospital nurse. I've seen the domestic violence. These kids are being raped at home and the domestic violence is horrific. Us healthcare workers have got some form of PTSD because we see a lifelong career of this. You cannot unsee the things that we've seen. As a nurse over 14 years, you've seen it all, working in an alcohol rehab facility, uh, working in an in Indigenous clinic, so you know the issues that these communities are facing and you know what's happening to some of these kids in their own homes. There's just one problem uh, with all this wealth of experience working with Alice Springs Indigenous children that Rachel apparently has. You see, this Channel 9 article, published alongside an interview that they did with her, so I trust it, says that Rachel moved to the NT seven years ago. Righto, so she's been an outback nurse working with Aboriginal people, saving them from themselves for seven years, right? No, wrong. She's been a cosmetic nurse since that time. Here, she says it on her Instagram page. She also says it here in this 2021 post, saying that she was then working in the industry for six years. Six years now, 2022, 23, seven years, yeah. But I thought to myself, what if she was a registered nurse as her main trade, but maybe casually squirting Botox into people's faces on the side? No, I don't think that either. You see, since last year, Rachel has had a clinic in Alice. The page for that clinic says that before she owned a clinic in Alice, she owned a clinic in Darwin. So we looked around online and yeah, it appears to me that since 2017, around seven years ago, Rachel had either opened up or worked at an NT outlet of Silk Laser Clinics. As we can see from this 2017 post confirming she's on the team before moving on to her own practice, which she's had since about 2017, 2018. So if the seven years in the NT thing she told Channel 9 is true, then it appears that Rachel has spent every moment of her seven years in the NT squirting Botox into cunt's faces. So I can't help but ask myself the question, what the fuck would Rachel Hale know about Aboriginal people in Alice Springs? Remember how Rachel said she heard a story last year about abused children? Hang on, let's go back and look at that again. In my career, I've seen a child age four come in with anal warts. Wait, why did they come to you with anal warts, mate? Did they come in to get fillers in the warts? I've seen a girl who was six with vaginal sores. Why did you see her vaginal sores, mate? Did you put Botox in them? I've heard of a, there was last year, there was a, a two-year-old that was raped, two. Rachel's just sick of black people, I reckon. And she's sick of kids acting up in Alice at night and so she's yarning with all her racist white Botox clients, trading Aboriginal horror stories. And what she's really mad about here is that she's losing some bookings. She said it herself. My main point is, what's going to happen to me when I go bankrupt then? So I've, my, my bookings have tanked. Babe, I know what will increase bookings. I have a great idea. Why don't you demand a full-scale racist military intervention into your hometown? That'll be great for business, babe. So yeah, I really look forward to hearing from Rachel Hale about why her local racist rumour mill is worth announcing to the entire nation via the media whilst lending the false impression that she is an outback nurse working with NT Aboriginal communities when it appears she hasn't done a single fucking second of that. I am not saying that there isn't any problem with, I don't know, youths or violence or whatever in Alice Springs at night. What I am saying is the issue is more complex. Although I did see this news of a wild talky beach party the other day. Underage teenagers brawling and passing out, about 500 of them, two police helicopters. My first thought was that all of their parents are probably raping them. That's why they have to be at the beach at the party. And you know, the only way we're going to deal with this is by sending the army. And we need to send the army in 
to Torquay. You know, send them in via the beaches. Send the ships in, the Navy, to take it over. It needs to be intervened. The issue of youth crime, or whatever you want to call it, is resolved by improving communities' access to good facilities and resources. Not by fucking interventions. It's also effectively responded to by improving the contact that youths have with the justice system. And the 2017 release of the NT Royal Commission into the protection and detention of children in the NT found chiefly that youth detention, including in the barbaric Dondale Detention Centre, increased by 77% the chance that those youths would reoffend afterward. Consequently, the recommendation was to close Dondale Detention Centre, one of many recommendations, and to create better pathways to help reintegrate troubled kids. That still hasn't fucking happened. But what's more, specific recommendations about creating a better trauma-informed therapeutic model for youth detention, they haven't even been implemented. As the head of the NT Council of Social Services says here, I'll put the link in the description. Don't listen to these bloodthirsty fucking warmongers. Pretend they've done everything to save these kids. They haven't even done the basics they were supposed to do from fucking years ago. They don't give a shit. Go read the Royal Commission findings yourself. I'll put the link in the description. You'll get more joy out of that than you will out of listening to months of Ben fucking Fordham. You want to know the definition of a racist? Someone who would rather launch a literal war on black children than even bother to try and follow the clearly outlined steps they were supposed to follow just to take care of them. The issues these kids face now are a direct consequence of the flow-on of not only the barbaric conditions in Dondale, yeah, but also the racist 2008 military intervention. Because that's exactly what it was. If anyone out there, and there'll be many of them, who would dare to tell you about how useful repeat military efforts and interventionism might be for victims and that's what they are ultimately in a systemic way may i direct you not only to exactly how things fucking are in alice right now as evidence that that is not the case but also to i don't know the middle east or anywhere else that suffered this same violent colonialist approach for god knows how long it doesn't work but hey Getting back to our Outback nurse, mate, Rachel, does it seem like maybe these media outlets didn't bother to check what her credentials might have been? Did you think that? Of course not. They're as bloodthirsty for black kids as she is. Here's the idiot from Channel 9 that spoke to her, Georgie Dickerson, on her Twitter again. He says she introduced that article. She goes, I spoke to Nurse Rachel Hale from Hashtag Alice Springs, who outlined some of the devastating and truly horrific levels of trauma she has witnessed on children. Change is needed. Now, Hashtag Crime. I mean, you can just feel her getting wet for the army being flown into kids can't you? Disgusting fucking animals, a lot of them. And this is not just a gotcha moment, yeah? There's nothing funny about this shit because don't forget, the entire NT intervention started out in exactly this fucking way, with the mainstream media kickstarting a fear campaign about Aboriginal rape in the NT leading to a government incursion. You don't remember? Back then it was ABC's Late Line that started it. They ran a report called Sexual Slavery Reported in Indigenous Community, which alleged that young Aboriginal kids were being entrapped in Central Australia, used as sex slaves and held hostage by communities who wouldn't oust pedophiles in town. They even got a youth worker in identity protected to attest to all these rapes. There's a very clear timeline here. The day after that late line episode, the NT Chief Minister announced an inquiry into violence against children in Aboriginal communities. In 2007 that was released and the Howard government eventually used that quite promptly as the impetus to launch a federal-led military invasion of those communities. But the report 
was mostly completely fucking made up. Lakeline never went to the community. They used stock footage of the joint. And the youth worker they interviewed was not a youth worker and he never lived in the community in question. He was a senior public servant called Gregory Andrews responsible for advising a liberal minister. Absolute garbage from parachuted in white racist bullshit artists. So you can see the danger here, can't you, of letting racist liars peddle absolute bullshit about NT Aboriginal people's lives, can't you? Let's just not be conned by these bloodthirsty fucking liars into supporting more brutality against Indigenous people. It is barbaric to support. I want to say it's beneath us, but no, it's not beneath us. It is absolutely who white Australia is. We can absolutely do it again, but we need to resist that impulse and we need to remind our racist white neighbours to fucking resist it too. Anyway, look, Rachel's number for her little Botox studio was up on her Instagram page. I won't publish it here, but, you know, uh, just to let off some steam, I gave her a quick call. The person you're calling is not available. Please leave a short message and it will be sent as an audio message. Yeah, g'day Rachel, my name's Tom. Uh, look, I've got an eight-year-old black child here who I was hoping to get their face filled up with a Botox and filler so they can look like your Jocelyn Wilderstein ass face. Um, but the thing is, they don't have parental guardian consent to do so. But I thought I'd call you, since you're such a fucking expert on Aboriginal children, I thought you might be able to just do it anyway. Let me know and we can book in a time. Thanks, mate.